Hello friends! Welcome back to Star Wars Week as we make some amazing paper circuits. I'm super excited that you are joining me today as we make the Star Destroyer, which will end up looking like this guy. And you'll be able to have a front light if you want it. That's going to be the easier option. Or you can do a front light and boosters, which is a little bit more difficult. So you'll have to decide if you want to make it like that or not. Again, you could just choose front light or front light and boosters today. And you can fold it up and we'll decorate it into our Star Destroyer. And earlier this week, you can check out our YouTube channel for the video on how to make our fun, cute little R2-D2 that's going around. Yesterday, we made the Millennium Falcon, which has our boosters in the back. Oop, they're not on. Hang on. There we go. Our boosters in the back. So we can fly through the sky on the Millennium Falcon. And tomorrow, we are going to be making the X-Wing fighters, because now we have a Star Destroyer, we have an enemy to fight, and we're going to make something to fight that enemy, so I am super excited about that. We are going to go over what you need to make the project with us today, and then we'll get to our shout out. so if you want a shout out, make sure that you type your name either in the YouTube chat box or the Zoom chat box, and Evan will let me know that you're here to say hello, because that is my favorite part of the mornings, I love them. Um, if you want to make sure that you get all of the PDFs delivered to your email inbox, you can always support us on patreon.com slash rosyresearch and supports just as little as a dollar a week. And then you get all of the fun activities. We're trying to be here as a nice um, cornerstone for your summer mornings so that you guys have a little bit of a schedule to your day, which helps, I think, everybody get through their weeks a little bit more smoothly. All right, so what we need, you need the printout. I always recommend printing on like a thicker cover stock paper, which just gives your final projects a little bit more security and durability for when you want to play with them. You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut them out. That's pretty important. For our circuit part, we need a battery that can light up our LEDs. We use 2032 batteries, but any sort of button cell, coin cell battery that's three volts will work. It just sort of depends on how long the life will be, but all of our projects have switches built into them, which is perfect. You're going to need some LEDs for this. And we're going to talk a little bit about if you want to use red LEDs in this project, because the Star Destroyer, it feels like it needs to have a red laser pointing out of its nose. And you can totally do that. But we're going to talk about what that might mean for your boosters. Um, you're going to need some copper tape. So this is a tape you can get at the hardware store or online. It's copper and metal, which means it conducts electricity. So it's a highway for little electrons to flow through, kind of like a wire in your wall. So we need that specific type of tape. And then you need a non-conductive tape, a tape that does not act like a highway for those little electrons. And any plastic tape, so like this scotch tape will work, um, electrical tape works, duct tape works, masking tape, which is a paper type of a tape, that works, or washi tape, depending on what kind of tape you want to use for your project. The stickier, the better. I like to say. And then if you want your boosters to stick out the back, you need like a pencil type of thing to poke a hole or a hole puncher. And we're going to have to have a little tricky cutout of a circle that is inside our project. And for that, you also might want um, a hole puncher or a pencil just to get it started. And that is all that we need today, which is kind of amazing. We're going to make this fun little project. Let's see who we have with us. Quick shout out to Rohan, because I know Rohan is coming in the afternoons after soccer camp, which sounds like a lot of fun, to be honest. It sounds fun to be running around with friends outside. Outside, of course, socially distanced. Um, but who else is here? First up, she got here on time. Ooh. And she needs to go to summer camp soon. Oh, that sounds exciting. We got exciting. Vinatia. Hello, Vinatia. It's great to see you. Vinatia did such a great job working on her project yesterday. Yeah. I was impressed, Vinatia. You got it working. You go, girl. Her summer camp's going to have a zip line, a <gasps> pool, water slides, what? a lake, a rope climb, canoeing, swimming. Oh, my gosh. the zip line goes over the lake. This is a ridiculous Can summer camp. Can you jump camp. off the zip line? Can I go? I, is there an age limit? I, I don't want to yeah, go. There probably is an age limit. Boo. But that doesn't mean we Vinatia can go. Vinatia gets all the fun. We just got to sneak in. But that makes me happy because Vinatia is rad. Uh, we got Jada Goo. Hello, Jada! I'm glad you're with us today. We missed you yesterday. Hopefully you made a Millennium Falcon some other point in the day. It was pretty sweet. Uh, Naomi is here. Hello, in... Naomi. She's in Zoom. Yay! Naomi's in Zoom, which reminds me, for parents who don't want their kids on YouTube, you can always go into our Zoom room and you get access to that through our Patreon. That's awesome. And Naomi, <clears throat> did I see a decorated Millennium Falcon from you yesterday? 
I mean, I saw a working one. Double booster. She did a good job. I don't know if I saw it decorated. Ooh, call out. So, uh, call out. Um, Evan's here. Evan's here. That's he me. is. That's He's me. like right next to me. That's me. I'm here. It's true. And that's what we got for shout outs right awesome. now. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started. All right. So, we are first going to, like every time, cut out our little project. There's two pieces to cut out. We have a little flap here that's going to be the switch. And then we have our big ship that's right there. So we just want to make sure that as we cut out, we save this switch right here. And we're going to save that guy for later. That'll come into play. I love having these switches because it lets us make sure that we can turn our projects on and off safely without running out our batteries quite as much. All right, so we're going to cut around on the thick black lines. All right, so all of our circuit templates have these sort of thick black lines that we want to cut out on. And then we will end up folding on the um, dotted lines. And that helps our circuit sort of be a little bit more secure when we add our circuit products on there. We don't have to bend them and fold them along with everything else. And that makes it a little bit easier for us. All right, so right here can be like a tricky part getting into that. When we talked about yesterday, one of my tricks for cutting is always, I just sort of cut from two different directions instead of trying to make this turn with my scissors. I can just come in from a different spot and I can make a really nice cut like that. This is a lot easier cutting project than yesterday. Yes, just like that. So now I have my two pieces. I got this guy and I have my switch piece. All right, and what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna clean up the cutting on this just a little bit. That was my blind cutting, which I thought was pretty good. We're gonna cut out um, this black circle, the really big one. And you're also gonna wanna decide, am I gonna do boosters today or not? Because if you're doing boosters today, you will want to um, think about if you're gonna hole punch your boosters or not. So if you don't hole punch them, it'll look more like the Millennium Falcon where it's sort of like behind a white screen because it's behind a white screen of paper. And if you choose not to do boosters, you won't have to do anything. And if you want your boosters to sort of stick out the way ours do, then you're going to want to poke the hole in there. All right. So if you want to do boosters and you want them to come through the other side, you're going to poke little holes on these black dots. That's sort of a little bit more difficult of a project. So if you are just beginning, you could skip the boosters and we can just do this piece. But this is gonna be what we stick our finger through. So I have a little finger hole here, which lets me press my battery on and off. So that's gonna be the hole that we put it through. And the easiest way to do that is if we take our hole puncher, I like to punch a hole just to get started like that and then we can sort of cut a circle around that hole and you, I have to do teeny tiny snips because my scissors are like um really big in comparison whoop so we can just cut out this hole for our finger and if in the end we decide I would like a little bit of a bigger finger hole you can totally do that it's not gonna hurt your circuit to cut this a little bit bigger or to cut it bigger later, it's gonna to be totally fine. And alternatively, they could use the hole punch just to make a bunch of little punches there. You could, uh, yeah, that seems like a little bit more difficult possibly. But there we go, we're gonna cut out that circle just like that. And I'm gonna grab my instructions to make sure I do it in the same order that we have down there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down the copper tape on these lines. So there are two lines that are orange and there's one line that's yellow. Of course, if you wanted to, you could actually connect these two orange lines because the orange lines always go to the short leg. So you could very easily connect those two together and just use two pieces of copper tape. I like to measure out my copper tape. We're going to put this on Curious George so that we can all see it a little bit better. Let me get my tape to tape it up. And... Maybe I want to tape it so that these guys give me a little bit more space to work. Just like that. 
All right, so I'm gonna tape one really long piece on this yellow one right here. So again, I'm gonna get my copper tape started. And once I have it started, I don't want to peel it off to then put down on the, the paper. That's not gonna work. It's all curly cued. It's gonna get really bent up. It's gonna get ripped really easily. And if it rips, we basically have this huge gap in our highway. And if the, imagine on a highway, the electrons are our cars. If you're on a highway driving your car and all of a sudden the highway ends and then you have to like climb up another level, you can't really get to your destination. So you sort of have a big traffic jam and everything is stopped. So instead we want to get it started. Let's see. My nails are failing me. This can be sometimes the trickiest part. There we go. Is getting it started. You just got to get your nail just between the two pieces. So once we have a little bit of our copper tape going, then we're going to peel and stick it down. So I'm going to stick it down right on top here and I'm going to just continue to peel the copper tape and stick it down in little chunks so that I can stick it right where I want to. And then when we get to the corner, we're not going to rip it. We're going to bend it around that corner because again, if we rip it, it's like us taking off the highway and the electrons can't get from one level to the other. So what I like to do at these spots is first you sort of got to get it a little bit oriented and then you just give yourself a whole bunch of tape. It doesn't matter. Like I have a huge amount here. That's okay. I can do that. I can just do that and I can just fold it down because what matters is that it's really one long piece. All right. So I want one long piece of tape. And you only need to do this back part right here if you're gonna put boosters on. If you decide, I don't wanna put the boosters on, you could stop your tape right here, it would come to here. But even if you put all the tape, you still don't need to put the boosters on. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is this guy, and we can do that in two pieces, or if you want to, you can do it in one. Sometimes a tricky part of doing it in one piece is right when you're almost finished, your copper tape might rip. I need to do the whole thing over. And since both of them are touching the bottom of the battery, they don't actually need to be connected. When I put this down up here, I do want to make sure that these two don't touch each other. That's really important that I have a gap between those two little pieces. All right, so I'm going to put my little gap right there. I want to make sure that that gap is there. All right, if they're touching, the electrons will decide, why do I need to climb up the ladder and go down the slide and have fun at summer camp like Vanity is about to have? Why can't I just cut across and skip it all? I don't know why anybody would want to skip all the fun, but the electrons are like that apparently. They want to skip the fun if they can. So I'm just going to peel and stick it down on my line. Just like this. And I need to make sure that it goes inside of this green circle. All right. As long as I stop it inside and well within, I don't want to just touch the edge and be done. That's going to cause a problem for me later. So I do want to make sure that I'm inside that green circle. And then I can do this other piece and this one will have a few bins in it. So I'm going to peel it. I'm going to get it started. I'm going to stick that down right to where I want it at. Just like that. And at this bin, I'm going to give myself some extra copper tape and then I can just sort of mold the copper tape into where I want to go. So once it's sort of molded there, I can just press it down. But again, these two pieces, they can't touch each other because that would create what we call a short circuit. It would make a shorter path for those little electrons to go through and it's so short that it actually is just around the battery. I like to smooth my copper tape with my nail. It just sort of helps it stay down. And I'm realizing that while I was talking about this, I did not poke my holes for my little booster LEDs. So I'm just going to take my little pencil piece. I'm going to poke two holes. I want to, I'm doing the pencil piece mainly because my LEDs are tiny. And I found that with the big hole punch, they're just like hanging out in midair. They're super loose. So I want a smaller hole. And if you have a hole, what you can do is you can actually press the paper through back the other way. 
so it looks prettier on this side because that's the side we're gonna see in the end. All right, so now we are all ready. And let's see, we are going to tape our LEDs in. Now here's what I wanna tell you about the red LEDs. Check this out, we're gonna put some red LEDs on my battery. Let's say I want the red in the front. So I wanna make sure my battery can do a red LED, but I want blue boosters in the back. All right, if I put a blue LED on, it doesn't actually go on. So you cannot have a red with a blue. I don't think you can have a red with any other color, to be honest, we can try them. Oh, I could have a red and a yellow. And if I have two boosters, you wanna make sure, can I have a red and two yellows? Which it looks like I can. I could have a red maybe and a green. Ooh, I can, so maybe it's just blue that I can't have red with. Make sure you can do two of the greens. So I could have green boosters on my thing if I wanted different colors. And you could double check that you can have white ones. Now all LEDs are a little bit different, so you want to check if it'll work. My white doesn't work, so I can't have red with white or red with blue, but I could have red with green boosters or yellow boosters. I could also have all red boosters if I wanted to. And the reason for this is red is really power hungry and it takes so much power, whereas the blue doesn't need nearly as much, that it just takes it away from the blue. The battery's going all to this. The green and the yellow take a little bit more power, so they're more even, but you can imagine if you have like one person who's eating like 15 plates of pasta and one person who's eating apple slices, the 15 plates of pasta sort of outweighs that few apple slices. And you don't really notice them, they don't light up. So you do wanna make sure anytime you have multiple LEDs, Whichever colors you're going to use, you can do the right amount of each. So maybe I decide I want yellow boosters. I don't know, that looks good. Because I really want the red. It makes me feel kind of like it's a laser coming out. I really like that idea. Now I know a lot of the people who are with us today have done a ton of paper circuits, but if you're new and it's your first time with us, there's only four ways you can put an LED on the battery. Only one of them will work, so you can put both legs on the bottom, that doesn't work, and neither does both legs on the top, because for a circuit to work, we need to get the chemical energy from the battery out of the top, through whatever we wanna light up, and into the bottom. And so for both these cases, we're either not touching the top or we're not touching the bottom. I could also put the LED on where it's straddling it, and we have one on top and one on bottom, but it doesn't work. And that's because LEDs are called one-way streets. They're like these little slides. The electrons climb up the slide, they slide down, whippee, and they make light. However, electrons are super good rule followers. And the one big rule of the playground from parents is usually don't climb up the slide. And the electrons will always stare at the bottom. So if you have the slide the wrong way, they won't do anything. And if you flip it around, your LED will light up. Now you might not want to have to always just guess which way will work. And that is fine because your LEDs have a shorter leg here and a longer leg. The longer leg always goes on top, all right? And sometimes I like to remind myself about that because a plus sign uses longer lines than a minus sign. It's like two lines instead of one. So it gets the longer side, the plus gets the longer side than the minus. All right, so we are all set. We've tested our battery. We've tested our LED. We know that the LEDs we're using will work, so now we can tape our LEDs in. So up here, I'm gonna tape it in, and it tells me that the long leg goes on this line here, and the short leg goes on that bottom line, so I'm just gonna spread these guys apart just a little bit, and you wanna make sure you make good contact with that copper tape, and when you tape it in, I always like to use a scotch tape, a masking tape, type of a thing, not copper tape. I find copper tape is just not sticky enough, it's not strong enough to really tape it in and then your, your circuits get kind of broken. So we'll tape this in, making sure that those legs are touching it and then you wanna press it really good, just like that. And it's okay for your tape to come down further because we don't have any parts of the circuit. If we had things that we wanted to attach right here, that would be a problem because now we have an insulative coating. We have sort of a highway gap right there. All right, I'm gonna fold it. I am realizing, guys, I did not crease my guy. So we're gonna crease it now so that when we put stuff in, it's a little bit more stable. 
I was chatting about other things, but we're gonna crease it just like this. So I like to crease it by folding it in half once like this. And the creases really help with those LED legs, which is why I kind of noticed it. That's always our second step is to crease it. I like to crease it really good because you can always make it like less by unfolding it. And then we're going to fold it again in half from this corner to the midline. All right. Kind of like when you fold a paper circuit. And fold this corner to the midline. Paper airplane. Yeah. Did I say paper circuit? You're doing a paper circuit. I'm doing a paper circuit. It might be one of those days for me today. Doop, doop, doop. All right, there is that guy like that. And then we're gonna fold, again, this top line down to the middle. And I'm gonna fold this piece backwards first along its line so I don't fold that piece. That's sort of like the nice back part to my circuit. All right, and then I can fold this piece sort of up to that middle line. With the thicker paper, it's really nice because you can sort of mold the paper to where you want before you really crease it. The thinner paper, that's a little bit trickier. All right, we're going to get a nice crease in there. Just like that. All right. Now we're folded and creased, which is what we want. And I'm gonna double check that these LED legs are still really happy. Okay, here we go. We're back at it, team. Just like that. And this is gonna be nice when we fold it, it sort of just folds and this is the back part. And it gives you that cool shape of the Star, the Star Destroyer. All right, so I have this guy up here, I'm going to put my boosters in, and I'm going to put my boosters through my paper. You can choose what you would like to do with your boosters. This here is a long leg, and then the part towards the outside, that's the short leg. So I need to make sure that both of them are touching. I'm going to do this bottom one first, and then that one, I think, just to make sure that I can still, I don't put tape over where I want to put on things onto my wires. So I can bend my short legs over like this. I don't really want my short leg to come over this bend. I could try it. It might cause a problem in my circuit later if I put it like this, but we could try it. Let's try it. Let's see. Just know that when you're putting the legs straight over um, a, uh, what do I want to say? A crease like that. It can cause some trouble. I don't need a huge piece of tape here. We're going to just do a littler piece. But sometimes actually bending the legs across a crease, that can help. It sort of depends. You go either way, really. But these guys will sort of pre-bend them. They're going to bend like that. Make sure that flat gets carried straight. So that we've got like that. But you can kind of see how it's coming up right here. As long as it's making good contact there, that's fine. But if you didn't want to make that risky maneuver, we could put it this way too. So the LED pokes through and yes. then the legs go. Yep, so my LED is poking through the paper through that hole that I made, just like that. And then I can take my legs, again, I gotta make sure the short leg comes down here. So I need to twist this LED like that. And then I can just put the legs right onto this copper tape. Just like this. And you have to bend your legs accordingly so that your LED is sticking out the way you want it to. So now I have my long and my short legs there as well. So that I can tape all these pieces in. Take that guy in. I'm a little worried about this piece. I'm not sure if that is gonna work for us. And my other one, I put them both sort of coming towards the middle piece. But it's always good to try new things and see if they work or not. Otherwise, how else do we know? All right, now we are ready. We are gonna put our battery in. 
So we always tape our battery in plus side up. That's the side with the writing on it. The other side has sort of, I don't know, polka dot bottom. That goes towards the paper. And we always tape it in on this green circle. And when we tape it in, we do want to make sure we don't tape over the top. We need to tape around the edges. And that's because this tape, remember, it acts like an insulator. So if I put tape all over the top, I can't get the electrons out to go run through those slides and light up the LED. It'll just be stuck there. So I can take some tape and I have to go just around the edges so that the whole top, as much of the top as I can get, is open. All right. We can put this guy here like that. And why do you want it open? And you want it open again because the metal is conductive. So if I touch metal to metal, I basically connected highways in this beautifully way that like cars won't notice. Um, if I connect metal to scotch tape to metal, I put a huge wall on the highway and asked my cars to like climb over the wall to get to the next part. And that doesn't work for them. They cars do not climb walls. So they get stuck and it breaks your circuit. All right, we could, if you want to, we can take a piece of copper tape, a little strip like this, and you can put it face down, part on the battery and the other part onto the long leg line, which is what's gonna be the top piece and we can see if it works. And I have all three of my LEDs lighting up right now. I could even bend this up a little more if I wanted to make sure that it will work when it's bent in place and it's looking pretty happy. But that means we need to make our switch. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put him right here for the moment. And we're gonna take our little switch. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this little switch. We're gonna tape it up to Curious George. We are going to cover our switch in copper tape. And you might be like, Dr. Erica, what does that mean? And we're just gonna put strips, like lines of copper tape all over our switch. So we're going to cover this literally in copper tape. I'm just going to do line by line. The better coverage you get, the better this will be. Now these ones, it doesn't matter if it's stacked up because it's just going to play that role of connecting the two. And we're going to have a whole bunch of these lines that are going to hit the long leg piece because the wire is going to come like this and a whole bunch of these lines that are going to hit the battery. The battery would be right here and our other line will be here. So you'll notice that there's a lot of different spots we can connect them. If you were worried about that, about it being connected the way you wanted it to be or having to use multiple strips of copper tape, you could cut out like a piece of foil and just tape a piece of foil or glue a piece of foil to this. And that would work equally well. All right. It's hard to see these guys upside down. I don't think I'm overlapping. It's okay if you overlap. I just don't think I'm precise enough right now to make that happen. All right. And then you can take it and you can cut off like sort of these extra pieces like that. And you end up with a nice little tab that we can use. And if we put this guy back here, we can even test that tab where if I press, it's on the battery, and if I press down on the tab, it makes contact and everything lights up. See that? And if I'm not pressing, it's not lit up. And that's really handy because I don't want to burn out my batteries. So now I just need to tape this tab in place. You want to tape it in place so that you can still press and hit this line of the long leg to connect the two. If I tape it over here, when I press, I'm not hitting this long leg anymore. That's a pretty big problem. All right, so I wanna make sure that I align it so that when I press, I can touch this long leg of tape. And then I have, it goes to the long leg into the top of the battery directly in a nice big highway. So I'm gonna take a piece of tape. I'm gonna tape that in place. So I'm just gonna make sure, I always like to triple check everything. And I can just tape this piece down right across. Well, Vinatia said that hers yeah. already worked. She got the switch to work. Good job, Vinatia. Awesome job. You guys are like professional circuit makers. All right, so now I got this guy going on. 
and that is beautiful. To fold this up, it's pretty easy. We just fold these pieces together and tape them. So, oh, my tape's going the wrong way because that was my Curious George tape. All right. This would be a good time to decorate before you tape everything over. Yes. Yes. Evan is like ahead of me today. Um, if you want to decorate your Star Destroyer, this is a great time to decorate it. This would be the top of your tar Star Destroyer because you've got the hole in the bottom where we're going to press to turn things on. Um, unless you feel like that hole is like a cool add-on to the top, then you can make this the top. But otherwise, this piece right here that's attached to the, the diamond would be your top, and you can decorate it to sort of look however you want. It's easier to decorate when you can sort of put it more flat to draw things. It's a little bit more difficult to decorate once it's in its three-dimensional shape. Agreed. All right, so we're just going to bend this guy up and tape it down. I like to just tape around some of these corners. And the other thing about decorating before you put it all together is sometimes markers, and a lot of times, markers do not like to draw on tape. So you'll end up with sort of this really cool design and you'll have like a blank spot wherever your tape is. And that, that might feel frustrating. Sharpies can do a little better, but it's still a different color on top of the tape. So that can be a good thing to think about. And then we will just tape this diamond back piece in place. And you know, it sort of depends how precise you want to tape it. You can be really precise and get it all the way perfect and have a really nice Star Destroyer. Just like paper airplanes, right? The better you, the more time you spend on those sort of folds, the better your end product looks. There we go. And then, oop, I lost one of my LEDs, but I can just press it on. Let's see. Something happened when I taped. Let's press this guy. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So I know it's in and out. So anytime it's in and out, you know it's just a little bit of a connection error. And you can usually press. There we go. So I've got this cool laser. If I want my laser to show more, I could just cut off the tip of that guy. And it could show more. And it could pew, pew, pew. Which could be really fun, especially tomorrow when we make the X-Wing. Somebody could have the Star Destroyer and try to fight with. Someone could have the X-Wing to fight with, which would be fun. But this is a really fun little project. Paper circuits, again, you don't have to do the back part. If you are a beginning paper circuit maker, just do the front part. Choose one LED and get that one LED going. If you've done a lot of paper circuits, go for the back, see if you can make it work, and then have a lot of fun doing some art and decorating and playing with all of our fun little um, Star Wars projects that we've been making. Because that's what it's all about. It's about making things that we can use and enjoy and feel really, really proud of. Because if you're making these paper circuits work, you should feel really proud of yourself. They are not things that are easy. A lot of times it takes some perseverance, especially when we're just getting started. And I've seen that in a lot of you guys. I know Frankie and Iris were just starting this week and they have done so much work persisting and trying again. And I'm so proud of all of you guys who keep getting back up to make those paper circuits work. Tomorrow, we will see you as we make some X-Wings. Oops, I gotta find the right spot for my guy. As we make our X-Wings fighters, as they light up so that we can fight through the sky. And then on Friday, we're gonna make some fun little characters that will have just one LED lit up. Maybe it's a lightsaber, maybe it's like the oracle of something that it's gonna be, or a holograph piece. We'll get to choose what that is. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning as we make paper circuits. We're gonna head over into Zoom to troubleshoot. And again, if you wanna get into Zoom, you can go check us out on patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And we'll have new paper circuits projects coming every week. Bye friends.